Hi, Bobcats. Now that we've defined equilibrium constants and figured out how to write the expressions for them, we're going to look at a bunch of different aspects of the equilibrium constants. We're going to see what happens to the value of the constant when you change the temperature. We're also going to see how we can use that equilibrium constant expression as an equation, and if we know all but one of the parameters in the equation, we can solve for the missing one. And we'll just kind of um, wrap some of these things together, including the units that apply to equilibrium constants. So our big objectives are to determine equilibrium expressions and constants, as well as to use these equilibrium expressions as formulas. If we look at the equilibrium between N2O4 and NO2, we can see some interesting effects. Um, for instance, the N2O4 molecule is colorless, but the NO2 molecule is kind of a red-brown color. If we allow this equilibrium to be established at different temperatures, these equilibria look very different. If we're at a very cold temperature, the, once the equilibrium has been established, there's no color to it. That's what we're seeing down here in this first um, image. We're at a very cold temperature, minus 78.4 degrees C. And the ampule that contains um, the N2O4 is completely colorless. If we let this warm up and we get to a temperature of uh, about negative 9.3 degrees C, or a little bit bigger, we start to see the formation of this red-brown color as um, the equilibrium is being established, and we have a mixture of N2O4 and um, NO2. The N2O4 is colorless, and the NO2 has that red-brown color to it. And then as the temperature warms up, and this equilibrium is established, we clearly have more of the um, NO2. So as we get more NO2, if we think about our equilibrium constant expression, NO2 squared over N2O4, the presence of more NO2 means that the numerator of this expression is bigger, which means the value for K will be bigger. So for this particular reaction, as the temperature goes up, the numerical value of K goes up. Most of the time when we're working equilibrium problems, temperature won't play into our calculation at all, but the temperature is virtually always given, and that's because at different temperatures there are different values of K. But you typically won't need to plug the temperature in at any point in your calculation. In this example, we're given the equilibrium between PCl5, PCl3, and Cl2. We're given an equilibrium constant of 0.497, and we're told at equilibrium, um, we have the partial pressure of PCl5 and PCl3, and we're asked to find the partial pressure of chlorine. Well, if you look at our equilibrium constant expression for this reaction, we're going to have PCl3 times Cl2 divided by PCl5. Now we can treat this as an equation with a bunch of variables in it. We've got K, PCl3, Cl2, and PCl5. Well, we have numbers for all of those except chlorine. So we can rearrange this equation to solve for chlorine. I prefer to do this in terms of the variables. Um, so right now chlorine is wrapped up with uh, getting multiplied by PCl3 and divided by PCl5. So we have to do the opposite math. We're going to divide by PCl3 and we're going to multiply by PCl5. That'll get rid of it on the right-hand side. But if we do that math to the right-hand side, we also have to do it to the left-hand side. So we're going to end up with K times PCl5 divided by PCl3 and that's all equal to the concentration of chlorine. Now, my eighth grade math teacher would never let us leave the equation solved for a variable where the variable was on the right-hand side. He always insisted we move it to the left-hand side. So when I move it down to the bottom here to start plugging numbers in, I'm just going to flip this equation around. It's just a compulsion. Thank you, Mr. Wilhelm. You were a great math teacher. 
So chlorine is going to be equal to K times PCL5 and divided by PCL3. So now I can just substitute the numbers in for this. K was 0.497, PCL5 was 0 0.860, and PCL3 is 0 0.350. And if I run this in my calculator, we've got 0.497 times 0.86 and divided by 0.35 and that's going to give us a value of 1.22. Now you might have noticed that this says Kp and our numbers were given in terms of atmospheres instead of molarities. Equilibrium constants come in different flavors and they have different subscripts on them. Um, if we have a Kc, that means it's in terms of concentration and we use molarity. A Kp means that it's in terms of, of pressures and we're going to use atmospheres. And we'll also see in the upcoming chapters things like Ka, Kb, and Ksp. So there are lots of little um, variations on K uh, that we'll use with those subscripts. Take a moment and run this expression through your calculator. One over two times two times two. Pause this video, run that through. All right, I hope you really did run it through because I'm trying to make a point about a very common mistake people, use, people will encounter when working these equilibrium problems. Um, before I run this through my calculator, I want to try to work this out analytically. We know that this expression means we're going to take 1 and divide it by the product of 2 times 2 times 2. Well, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. This is going to be 1 eighth or 0.125. Now, I bet a lot of folks, when you ran this through your calculator, ended up with a value of 2. What this has to do is, what's the underlying problem here, is the way that you're communicating with your calculator. Um, I like to tell the story about how when my daughter was really little, we went through this phase where I would ask her, what would you like for dinner? Would you like mac and cheese or would you like hot dogs? And she'd get all excited when I said hot dogs. Now this is before she could really talk. So I took that to mean that she wanted hot dogs for dinner. So I heated up a hot dog, chopped it up into little pieces for her, put it in front of her, and she got really, really mad. I was like, okay, you said you wanted hot dogs. The only other thing I have in the refrigerator right now is mac and cheese, so I guess I'll warm up some of that. Then I gave her mac and cheese, and she was all happy. We went through this routine for a couple of nights before it finally dawned on me that I was asking her which one she wanted, but she was responding with which one she did not want to eat. So being the adult in the room, I had to change my communication style. I had to change it to realizing that she was telling me what she did not want as opposed to telling me what she wanted. So you are the smart one. Your calculator's done. Your calculator's only going to do exactly what you tell it to do. So when I go to enter this into my calculator, what I'm going to hit is 1 divided by 2, divided by 2, divided by 2. And then my calculator is going to tell me 0.125. Here's the deal. When you use your calculator to enter a number like this, hitting the divide key tells your calculator that the number is in the bottom of this expression. When you go to put another number in, if you hit divide again, you're saying, hey, this next number is in the bottom as well. And when you hit divide the third time, you're saying, yep, this third one is down in the bottom as well. I am not a fan of parentheses because it is so hard to keep the open and the close lined up correctly. So if you're going to do this without parentheses, just every time there's a number in the top, you use the time key, times key, and every time there's a number in the bottom, you use the divide key. Kp and Kc 
are um, very closely related versions of our equilibrium constant. P stands for pressure and C comes from stands for concentration. The derivation of this relationship is given in your textbooks. I'm not going to go through how to derive it, but we can relate these using the ideal gas law, and we get that Kp is equal to Kc times Rt raised to the delta N sub g. Delta N sub g is have the change in the number of moles of gas. So for instance, if we have hydrogen plus nitrogen in equilibrium with ammonia, when we go to balance this equation, we need uh, three hydrogens and two ammonias. The change in the number of moles of gas is, well, we have two moles of gas on the product side, and on the reactant side, we have three plus one or four moles of gas, so two minus four gives us minus two. So our change, our delta N, would be a minus two. We're going to use R as the regular value for the ideal gas law constant, 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And one thing to remember is that if delta N for your moles of gas is equal to zero, RT raised to the zero power is just one, and so KP is equal to KC if the reactants and the products have the same number of moles of gas. In this example, we are looking at uh, finding Kc when we're given Kp. Taking the equation from the previous slide and rearranging it gives us that Kc is equal to Kp divided by Rt raised to the delta n, and we found on the last slide that delta n is equal to minus 2 for this reaction. Um, so if I take all of the numbers that I have for this and plug them in, I've got that Kc is equal to 6.8 times 10 to the negative 5 divided by, well r is 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. The temperature is 25 degrees C or 298 Kelvin. And um, delta N is negative 2. All right, if I run that new denominator through my uh, calculator, I get 24 and change, and that's raised to the minus 2 power. Something in the denominator to the minus 2 power can be moved to the numerator to the positive 2 power. So that's 24.4658 squared, and that's just a little easier to run through my calculator. That gives me a value of 4.1 times 10 to the 8th for Kc. There's good news in this chapter about the equilibrium constant in units. Yes, K has no units. K is actually uh, formally defined in terms of something called activity. And um, if you're interested in, in more about that, make sure you take PCHEM or physical chemistry um, and you'll get into uh, what that's all about. But for dilute aqueous solutions, the activity is very close to the molarity, so we just use molarity instead. And activity, it turns out, is unitless. And so um, we just use molarities, pretend they're activities, and uh, don't deal with units. In this video, we wrapped up a lot of different aspects of the uh, equilibrium constant expression. We showed how it could be used as a formula to solve for an unknown. We saw how temperature affects equilibrium constants, and we saw the relationship between Kp and Kc.